three weeks and India has still kept Kashmir under lockdown. But ladies and gentlemen, India is now facing its arch nemesis, the stone. <coughs> no, not the philosopher's stone or the rock's son, just, just the stone. Yeah. Assalamu alaikum guys and welcome to another episode of Smile to Jannah. Smile to Jannah. <laughs> India's three step strategy in Kashmir. Number one, keep the media out. Number two, take over Kashmir by force. And number three, deny and reject any claim that makes them look bad. Absolutely not. No, no, no. Yes, no, absolutely. No, yes. no, I can no, no. That tweet. Example one. The international media reports that medicine is running out and the doctors are panicking. India responds, No it's not, it's just fake news. Al Jazeera, Al Jazeera must tell us. Example 2, international media reports that hundreds of people are dying. They respond, No they're not, fake news, not a single person has died. And on top of that they refuse to give out death certificates and threaten doctors with revealing the actual numbers. Considering this is the rhetoric of the army chief, I think it's fair to assume that things aren't going that great. It is not worth joining militancy because you will not live long and therefore anybody who creates violence will be neutralized. But then if people do not behave and continue with the violence, then the only element left is to neutralize them. That anybody who is disrupting operations of the security forces need to be dealt with sternly. You are a supporter of the terrorists. So you should be dealt with accordingly. Example 3. Reports of molesting women. They respond. No it's not. It's fake news. We are roaring tonight India versus fake news. Despite loads of media outlets reporting that there's this growing number of videos being released of Indian men fantasizing of marrying fair skinned Kashmiris. But what these uggos fail to realize is these women actually have to like you. Well I know how the end of that song goes, you know what I'm saying. Example 4. Reports of unbearable torture by the authorities. They respond with No it's not. Fake news. Watch out BBC we are coming after you. But the international media responds with We've got the footage. And they respond with No, it, it's just Pakistanis dressed like us trying to make us look bad. Pakistan army is donning the Indian army uniform in Pakistan occupied Kashmir to shoot these fake videos of You just can't win with these people, you know what I mean? It is understandable because India has got its hands full trying to roast Pakistan. And I say the word trying because they're either talking about the toilet habits of the Prime Minister. The desperate Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan. Uh, Pakistan Prime Minister clearly being absolutely desperate. Absolutely desperate is desperate comments why he can't mind his own business. Or the fact that he hasn't paid the electric bill. The Pakistan Prime Minister's office has reportedly not paid dues despite several reminders from the Islamabad electric supply company. What are you, his mother? He doesn't eat his broccoli, he doesn't clean his room and he doesn't take the trash out, you know what I mean? He's a very naughty boy. What the hell is this? But nothing has cheesed India off more than stones. General Bipin Rawat had warned the stone pelters and told them that if you want to fight us, we will fight back with all might. Their soldiers are armed with guns, but they're moaning about kids with pebbles. In fact, anyone caught with a stone is being labelled a terrorist. But yes, there are those who will try and say don't treat uh, stone pelters as uh, terrorists, uh, uh, treat them as misguided youth. But why shouldn't we treat them as overground workers? Since that word's been used by the Indians, it's lost all meaning. I mean, what's the story? One of the army guys got unlucky with the stone and the whole nation starts going nuts. Listen to this woman. She tries to milk the story but fails miserably. The convoy was attacked with stones. The stone uh, that came uh, towards this Javan hit him on the head and he lost his life. Because at the end of the day, the guy got hit on the head with a stone. He should have been wearing a helmet. Nah I mean. And to be frank, if he can't survive a stone, let's face it, he's not cut out to be in the army is he? And considering the authorities are doing the terrorism, I think the headlines should have been a young revolutionary defeats terrorist with a stone. 
And let's end with this guys. Considering Kashmir has been put under lockdown for three weeks with allegations of deaths, torture and rape, the young people are bound to be cheesed off and throwing stones is their way of venting to suppress even that. The day after the casualty that the army had to face at the hands of these menacing men. And go as far as linking it to terrorism is not only weak and pathetic, but it's just outright cowardice. And the only other country that's known to do this is hopefully the decent good people of India rise up and do something positive and stop all of this going on. Because let's face it guys, nothing is written in stone. Come on bro. What? Until next time guys. Assalamu alaikum. Activism, you, you can't just sit in a masjid and expect Allah's help to come. And you can't just be an activist and without ibadah expect the help of Allah to come.